Please pause this video and give this question a go on your own, then we'll do it together. As always, we'll begin by reading the question stem, which asks the following. Which of the following, if true, would most strengthen Dr. Kim's hypothesis? This stem suggests that the conclusion of the argument is the same as Dr. Kim's hypothesis, and our goal will be to identify a new premise that strengthens the conclusion. Okay, now let's read the argument and summarize the premises and conclusion as we read. The first sentence says this. One premise here is that the plant was built 12 years ago, so we might write something like this. Another premise is that the salinity levels have increased, which we can summarize like that. Reading on, we get the following statement. This contains another premise, which we might summarize this way. Finally, we have this is the conclusion. It's what the author is trying to convince us of. So we might summarize this conclusion as follows. Okay, now that we've summarized the argument, can you spot any possible assumptions? Well, notice that this is a cause and effect argument, since the conclusion is that the high salinity in the river is causing the decrease in polyfish egg production. For cause and effect arguments, the primary assumption is that x is the only possible cause of y. So one of the assumptions in this argument is the increased salinity is the only possible cause of the decreased egg production. We can summarize this assumption as follows. Now we could try looking for additional assumptions, but it's better to start checking the answer choices. As we do so, we should remember that to strengthen a cause and effect argument, we need to provide additional information that either supports the causal effect or eliminates the possibility that something else caused the effect. To begin, answer choice A says, in the same state, many populations of polyfish that are not downstream of pretzel desalinization plants have experienced a reduction in egg production. Does this strengthen the conclusion that high salinity lowers polyfish egg production? No, it actually weakens the conclusion by suggesting that egg production is also low in areas that do not have desalinization plants nearby. This suggests that something else might be causing the reduction in lower polyfish egg production. As such, we'll eliminate answer choice A. Next, we have answer choice B. Prior to the construction of the pretzel desalinization plant, the salinity of the 10-mile stretch of river downstream never exceeded 180 units. Does this strengthen the conclusion that high salinity lowers polyfish egg production? No. Sure, it does strengthen the possibility that the desalinization plant is responsible for the increase in the river salinity, but it doesn't strengthen the conclusion about the cause of the decreased egg production, so we'll eliminate it. Answer choice C says, other species of fish in the same 10-mile stretch have experienced a sharp reduction in egg production. Does this strengthen the conclusion that high salinity lowers polyfish egg production? No. This premise merely tells us that the egg production problem is not unique to the polyfish. This suggests that the thing causing the reduced polyfish egg production may also be causing reduced egg production in other fish. Since there's nothing here that strengthens the causal relationship between increased salinity and polyfish egg production, we'll eliminate it. Next we have answer choice D. In the past 12 years, the salinity of the tributaries flowing into the 10-mile stretch of river downstream from the plant has remained below 180 units, and the polyfish living in these tributaries have not experienced any decline in egg production. Does this strengthen the conclusion that high salinity lowers polyfish egg production? Yes. This argument tells us that there is low egg production in the presence of high salinity and this answer choice tells us that egg production is stable where there is no high salinity. This certainly strengthens the causal relationship between salinity and egg production. Since this strengthens the argument, we'll keep it. Finally, we have answer choice E, which says, In other states, fish downstream from pretzel desalinization plants have experienced declines in egg production. Does this strengthen the conclusion that high salinity lowers polyfish egg production? 
Yes, to a certain degree. However, for this premise to strengthen the conclusion, we need to make some assumptions. The biggest assumption is that the pretzel desalinization plants mentioned in this premise have the same impact on salinity as the plants mentioned in the original argument. After all, the conclusion is all about the effect of high salinity, not the presence of pretzel desalinization plants. So in order for this answer choice to strengthen the argument, we need some kind of assurance that those pretzel desalinization plants in other states do indeed increase salinity levels. If those plants do not increase salinity levels, then this premise actually hurts the conclusion, since it would suggest that something other than high salinity is lowering the egg production. Also note that answer choice E refers to fish downstream, but it does not specifically mention pola fish. For all we know, there might not be any pola fish in those states. Since this answer premise is not necessarily related to pola fish, it's hard to tell whether it strengthens the argument. So while answer choice E might strengthen the argument if certain assumptions are made, it does not strengthen the argument to the same extent that answer choice D does. So when we eliminate answer choice E, we see that answer choice D is the best answer here.